Hi everybody, David Fierstein, Power Call Sirens, the Fierstein brand. Uh, we are working on part three of the Horn Blaster 224 Nightmare Edition with the spare tire delete train horn. Uh, this is part three of this video. Uh, initially, you have to get the spare tire out of the vehicle. If you've never gotten your spare tire out of a 2019 Silverado before, I want to show you how. It's really, really simple. So you have this piece right here, okay? And this lock is in here like this. So you take your key, which if you have your key, it's not really a key, but there's a button on the side right here and you press that button and an actual key comes out of the unit like that, okay? That key goes into there. You remove that lock, which gives you access to your spare tire, okay? So in the back of your truck, underneath your back seat, you've got a package like this, not including the glove, that has these different items. So you want to get an extension to where you're looking for this piece right here, okay? That piece is what goes all the way into there, and then you have the crank right there, you spin it around constantly, and your spare tire comes down, okay? Down enough where you have to take that ball out of the spare tire, however you happen to be able to do that. So once you actually get that spare tire out, eventually your train horn assembly is gonna go there. That cable is gonna go down into the train horn assembly, and then when you crank your tire back up, your train horn assembly should, in essence, come up into that whole area. So that is what you are, uh, you're looking for. Uh, this is just a quick video to show you how to change that spare tire. I'm sorry, not how to change it, how to get the spare tire out of there. And just in case you've never you've never taken it out of an, a 2019 or 2020 Silverado. It's really, really easy. So we're going to take this out of here right now, uh, and then we're going to go get our train horn assembly. For some reason, Mother Nature decided COVID-19 isn't bad enough. It's May 9th, and it's 32 degrees in Northern Virginia. What in the hell is going on in Mother Nature? I mean, it is freezing cold out if you could see me i've got gloves and a hat and i'm dressed in sweatpants it's just ridiculous the weather and you know figures it'll probably be nice tomorrow on mother's day but it's cold out today so uh, this is my truck it's a 2019 silverado sca performance package and uh it's got six inch lift on it with custom mickey thompson wheels and tires by sca performance uh really really nice truck very blessed to have this truck so that is what you have to do to remove the spare tire. We'll come back for part four and we'll see how this works. Take care, have a great day, stay warm. All right, so whether I'm in the picture, I do not know, but that's okay. So the whole goal of this is to crank this up. I was able to get the cable in the bottom hole, even past that relay, because it's just a small cable. So now I've got this back in here and technically I should be able to wind this up and it should start cranking up the unit, which you can see it is already. What I want to make sure of is that, is that this is sitting in there properly. Make sure it's equal and it's not like at an angle or something like that. You want to make sure that it stays flat so when you're lifting it up, it's equal. Now, I'm on a little bit of an incline, so when I raise this up, it's probably going to sway a little bit. Okay. So when you bring down the spare tire, the spare tire is already in an angle because it's a, it, it's just it's a wire. So you want to make sure that as you're lifting this up, everything is the way it should be. Okay, you may want to hold it if you can. Probably easier with two people, but I'm that guy that likes to do things by myself. So let's pray that this works. All the time that you're doing this, you want to make sure. Look at your feet and look at where your feet on this thing are because if your feet don't match up with where you're trying to mount it you may need to adjust your feet either front or back or left or right or however you have this mounted and you may need to change some things so most people have this mounted where the train horns are facing backwards you can face them this way or that way you can face them forward you do not want to face them forward because if you face them forward and then water and moisture gets in them. Every time you blow your horns, you're gonna have moisture and it's gonna sound horrible. So you don't wanna mount these backwards. So we're gonna keep trying as I'm looking at the feet.
So what I found under there is, I'll take, I'll let you take a look. Oh, see if I can bring this down. If you see underneath here, there's a frame piece right there, okay? And the feet are sitting on that frame piece. I don't wanna, I don't think I wanna do that. I want those, I want that, I want those feet to fit in the frame piece. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to take those two feet and I'm gonna have to move them forward and extend them so they actually go into that frame and then they sit up on that frame piece. The ones in the back will sit up on that round piece of frame and hopefully it will stay there. That's a, I was hoping that would be a, a, a flat piece, but you may have to make an adjustment to, to those to make those fit. Or if I bring those two feet forward right there, I might be able to make them sit on that flat piece right there. But it's gonna require some adjustment and everybody's vehicle is gonna be different. You wanna make those, make sure those feet are tied up, tight up on whatever you happen to do them on. So we're gonna make some adjustments and then we're gonna come back, okay? All right, everybody, so just to update you um, on the horn blaster kit, I've got it all the way up, not all the way up, but it's, it's hanging down right now. But what I found, as you saw in the earlier message was, it has about this much of a gap between the feet and the top of the frame. So what Horn Blasters has recommended is you get a bigger piece of thread that fits up higher. But being innovative and customizing stuff, yes, that's Genesis in the background, is what I've done is I've cut four pieces of wood. Um, one of them's up there already, but you can see those three right there. The reason there's Velcro on them is because you put the wood up there and it's gonna fall out. So the Velcro is just an easy, easy cheat way of putting it where you want it on the frame and it'll and it'll hold itself up there so uh, once that's up there then I can lift up the horn blaster and it will attach to those pieces of wood and then I can tighten it really good because you don't want you don't want to rely on just the cable you want to make sure that those four feet are making contact with something so once that gets up there I will update I'll keep on going so that's just a, a quick cheat way to, uh, to modify things and customize okay so we have these installed and it is beautiful. So I had to make some modifications. Again, this is David with Power Call Sirens, uh, putting the Horde Blaster Nightmare Edition 224 in. Uh, I have, as you've seen in the previous uh, pictures, we had some issues with it uh, meshing on the frame. So what I ended up doing, instead of, instead of extending those, uh, those feet, I used four pieces of wood. So if you look under here, you can see, whoops, you can see right there, I have put two pieces of wood in that frame and those feet match up with the wood beautifully. And then on the other side, if you can see it, I've got another piece of wood in the frame piece right behind the spindle for the spare tire. So those two feet match up perfectly uh, on that frame, mounting it to the frame. So that's the type of modification that you can do. It really doesn't make any sense to go to Home Depot and, and try to extend that 5 16 screw. It, it just it, it just makes a whole lot more sense to, to come up with something yourself. Um, you see how that frame is probably about two to two and a half inches in diameter. So you can easily put a couple pieces of wood, any type of wood up there that's gonna make you make contact with your frame. So now that that's up there, I've tightened the, the frame to it and it is solid as a rock. It is no going nowhere and that's what you want. You don't want it loose to where it's wiggling. You want it totally solid to where when you pull on it, you're shaking the truck. When we did car seats back in the day in fire rescue, we had to shake it. And if it shook the vehicle, then you knew you did it right. So you can see how that's mounted up there. I'm shaking the whole vehicle. It's not moving at all, which is fantastic. So that's exactly how it looks. This will be my spare, uh, my spare air which I told you I'm gonna put a chuck somewhere. So if I want compressed air, I can easily just plug into that. That's probably gonna go up there somewhere. And then you've got all your wiring that I did last night, which you saw in those previous YouTube videos, where I've got my basic round that's connected to both solenoids, the compressor and, the, uh, and everything else that needs to go there. And then this wire will run against the frame. It'll have to run all the way up to the front of the vehicle for a battery. And then I've got my, two, my three switch wires right here and it should be good to go. Now I haven't tested it yet, because I'm scared to death to test it in my neighborhood, but um, it, it's gonna be tested soon. So as you saw earlier, that's the quick air release relay. So when I hit the button, it'll automatically drain the tank and the air will come out of that hole right there. So make sure, again, as I mentioned before yesterday, when you install this relay, do not put that, that butt plug in there. It will not, it, if you plug that hole right there, you're gonna, you're gonna blow everything up and it's just not a good idea. So always make sure that that 
that piece of that, that that connector right there is empty it comes with a plug to put in there but do not do it then you've got your compressor make sure all your fittings are tight run all your wire and let's see what kind of what kind of craziness we can do now the only thing i haven't done yet which i've got to do now is they come with let's see if i can find it here it comes with these two metal uh metal cables with a carabiner on it there's two of them you want to wrap that around your frame just in case for some reason your spare tire uh cable decides to snap or something goes wrong with it you have a backup holding up your kit until you can fix it so take both of these wrap it around the frame of the spare tire to leap back bracket and then wrap it around this frame piece right here all right so we'll be back with some more wiring and we'll see what happens all right so we are back with the fierce Steam brand silverado with the nightmare 224 horn blasters uh spare tire delete kit final video of installation i've got everything installed it turned out absolutely beautiful uh, this is where they're mounted i decided to not put in the extra compressed air option right now just because we're running on limited time so i plugged that side right there i put my own graphics down underneath there which is pretty cool it is as tight as can be it is not moving uh, i ended up like i said putting a couple of wood blocks in there and it works fantastically I ran my power wires underneath the frame of the truck and they go underneath the truck. There's a lot of grommets underneath the front seat right here that you can you can use to drill in. So the wires came up under, I ran power, and then in the center console of the truck, I have the switch, the switches that I had right here. So what it'll do is when I have the turn the compressor on, I hit the red wire, the red button. And you can hear it running back there okay so that's what turns your compressor on if i hit this button right there you can hear it it'll drain my tank and then if i hit the momentary switch it's not fully charged yet so it's not going to make a lot of noise but that's what that does so it's a switch panel that does the quick air release the compressor and then the horns, all wired and wall wired beautifully and everything turned out great by the grace of God. Thank you so much for watching this. Um, we will take some videos later once the truck is cleaned up and once we can actually get out of our neighborhood where we can actually, uh, we can actually test this thing out fully. Uh, so that was the final installation. Like I said, I ran the wires. I gotta do a little bit more tucking up because you can see that there, which is actually okay because it's tied up but my loom goes here, it follows the frame down, it goes underneath the driver's seat and then into my switches. So that is the, I believe the Horn Blaster 224 Nightmare Edition with the spare tire delete. It looks fantastic. It doesn't, you don't really see it from standing right here. You kind of got to get down and see it, but it is an awesome addition to what I call hashtag mega sexy truck. Thank you all for watching. If you have any questions about your spare tire delete, nightmare installation feel free to drop me a message on youtube i'm pretty comfortable with how it went in and i might be able to help you if you need something have a great day we'll be back with some videos real soon thanks for watching We're in the middle of Leesburg, Virginia. Family's inside the truck. You can see how far it is away. Hit the regular horn first. So that's the regular horn, okay? And that you can hear from a long distance away because it's a big Chevy horn. But now if you hit the train horn, this is what the train horn sounds like from hundreds and hundreds of feet away. So it's not fully charged, but you get the point. It gets about seven seconds <laughs> of charge. So, so that's what the train horn sounds like. <laughs> If you have any questions about how to install it, it's a great toy. Take care. Powercallsirens.com. Visit the website.